In this next video, we're going to be talking about how to create setup tables and lookup tables. And as we do this, we're actually not going to create one. We're just going to talk more about the theory. Our following video will show very quickly how to create one in Management Studio. But there's a few things that you really want to make sure that you understand when you're creating lookup tables. If you follow these rules and these paradigms, you'll be a lot happier. The first thing that I wanted to mention, let's just take a graphical or a look in Excel of what a table might look like. This is just, we'll call it a template. The letter X in each of these cases and fields, I like to use a prefix and it's something unique usually for every table. Like for a table on units of measure, I'd use the, the letter U, that kind of thing. I always call the auto number increment field key. And then I always have two text fields, one I call display, one I call description. And then I have one called visible, one called order, one called created, and one called modified. I use those fields as a minimum, as a minimum in any setup table. I could add other fields to it, and sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to. But the reason I use these are all different reasons. Created is when the record was created in SQL Server. Modified is that's something you manage afterwards, somebody changes something. Uh, you may also want to track who it was and what machine the change came from. Order is really something that you would want to use if you're trying to supersede the order of what you're displaying possibly in a dropdown because you want to override uh, you know, the alphanumeric. And visible might just be if you have values that you need to keep in the system uh, for historical reasons, but you may want to suppress them from future dropdowns, future um, situations where people can actually pick that option. Here's what this might look like specifically for units. I just basically put the letter U in front of everything. Um, here, notice the order, 100, 100, 200, 200, 100. By changing this, I can query this information so that anything with a 200 comes last. So maybe in this case, they want to use anything that's non-metric first and then put all the metric stuff at the end. And that's why you would do something like that. Let's take a look now more closely at display and description. Why would you need two text fields? We'll see how there's a short name and a long name. In lookup tables, there's always this concept. I'm going to go over something, and I want you guys to understand. This is from after setting up thousands and thousands of tables. What you want to do is understand something. There's always reasons why you'd have a long name and a short name. Sometimes, maybe on a report, you might want to put this next to you know a measurement instead of something long like this. Sometimes you need a short name, sometimes you need a long name. Maybe you're printing out labels or something. It, it all depends. But if you were creating different setup tables at different times, uh, you might run the risk of saying, well, there's a short name and a long name, or there's a short name and a full name, or you know, there's an atomic symbol and an atomic name. Really though, as you mature in database development, it will behoove you to do this. Anytime that you're making a setup table, and you're having display fields or text fields, call them the same thing. Even if you change the prefix a little bit, try to call them the same thing. Always say something underscore display, something underscore description, even if that seems a little restraining right now. But the reason why you want to do that is that when you're picking from all these different setup tables and you're writing all these complicated uh, join queries later on, you won't be sitting there saying, what did I call that field? You'll remember, oh, that's something underscore display, or that's something underscore description. And you'll know what the prefix is, because it's usually the first letter in the table name that you created. So it's pretty simple. Here's what it would look like a little more graphically as a template. Uh, you have a key. It's a primary key. It's an auto increment. You've got your display and your description. I always make them 2,000 characters. You'll never use that much, but with a bear pair, you only pay for what you use. So why make it 25 and then have a, something that's going to get truncated? Visible is always a bit, and I default it to true. Order is always an int, and I default it to something ridiculously high. The reason why you would do that is because if you don't have a default, and if you don't have a high default, when you start setting orders for things, like the first one is 10 and the second one is 20, anything that's null that hadn't been set yet actually goes to the top, and you don't want that to happen. So you basically put everything at the end of the line until you start changing it. Created is the default value, and it's the current date and time when the record's created. And in our next video, we'll actually show how to do this in Management Studio.